Okay, so we're going to go into naming ionic compounds. So whoa, there's a bunch of rules that we need to know to uh, name ionic compounds. They're made out of cations and anions, like we said last time. And um, this is the first rule right here. So if the metal forms only one cation, okay, another way of thinking about this is basically if it has an MCI, okay? So if it has a most common ion, remember that pattern we learned uh, in the previous lecture, if it follows that pattern, that means you're going to use this rule right here. You just name, write the name of the cation. So our example would be KCl. You write potassium for K. And then for the anion, uh, you write that second, and you just change the ending to IDE. So Cl is chlorine. So we just ch change the ending to chloride. OK? That's pretty much it. So. I'll give you guys maybe a second to try this right here, CABR2. Um, if you guys did the notes already, then this would be a good way to just kind of see if you're able to do this, but see if you can write the name of CABR2. And then um, they... Okay, so we got CABR2. So let's start with the cation. Um, what's the name of the cation? Yeah, calcium. So we're gonna write calcium. And then the anion is bromine but we want to change the ending to IDE. So it just turns into bromide. Okay, that's it. The key thing to note is I know there's two bromines, but it doesn't matter. We just keep just the regular name bromine. All right. Any questions about that? All righty, let's move on to the second type of ionic compound. The second type is the same thing as the first one. The only difference is the cation. And basically, this is when the metal can form more than one type of cation. So those are the transition metals in the middle of the periodic table. So if you got a metal right here in the middle, okay, then you're going to have to write parentheses um, and then write the charge. Okay, So for example, uh, we got FeBr2. Um, here, this compound, this ionic compound is made up of iron which has a charge of two plus and bromine. So you just write iron and then the charge two and then bromide. Okay. Here we have FeBr3, which is where you have iron with a plus three charge. And so we write iron three bromide. Okay. So if you have a metal in the middle of the periodic table, that transition metal put, uh, area, then you just want to write the charge of the metal um, in parentheses. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay, so this one might, these might be a little bit trickier because you actually need to calculate the charge of the metal. So I'll do one of them with you and then I'll have you guys try uh, 216 on your own, okay? So here we have, uh, I'll write this bigger, Cu, Cl2. Now this is made up of one copper and copper is in the middle of the periodic table. So we don't have an MCI for that. And it's made out of two chlorines, okay? But if you take a look at chlorine, what's the most common ion for chlorine? One minus. Yeah, one minus. So chlorine is going to be minus one. Now, if you have two chlorines balanced out by one copper, what does the charge on the copper have to be? Two. Yeah, two plus. So there you go. That's how you can figure out the charge on the copper. So for the name, really simple. Um, Cu is copper, so we write copper. And since copper is in the middle of the periodic table, we have to write the charge. So the copper two, and then it's chlorine, but we change the ending to IDE, so chloride. Okay. So that's how you can figure out um, the charge of metals in the middle of the periodic table. All right, so I'll give you guys about a minute. See if you guys can do the same thing for the other one, C-U-C-L. See if you can write the full name and then we'll go over it together. All right. All right. So for 216, um, it's very similar to the one that we just did. I'm going to erase this real quick. Um, we're going to take a look at the ionic compound. So you have a compound made out of just Cu and Cl. Okay. We just said chlorine's MCI is negative one, and there's only one copper balancing that out. So what's the charge on copper? One. Yeah, one, just positive one. Okay. So for the name, just write copper, one, and then chloride. 
So very similar to the previous one. The only difference is the charge on the copper. Okay, and that's going to change the name a little bit inside the parentheses. So those are two of the ionic compounds named. Right. Any questions on those first two rules? Hopefully it's not too much. All righty, let's uh, move on. So this is just a table of uh, different names you could see uh, for um, different ions. Now, you guys don't need to memorize this, like chromis, chromic, cobaltus, cobaltic. That's a very old way of naming it. Um, but in your readings, and if you see some a word, uh, terms like this, then you can always refer back to the table. But for the AP test, you don't need to memorize this right here. Okay, I just wanted it up there so you have a reference in case you ever encounter it doing practice problems from old AP tests. But they don't use these terms anymore. This, the ones with the parentheses, are the ones that we use now. Okay. All right. Uh, the third rule is that if an ionic compound has polyatomic, so anything from this table. You just write the name of the polyatomic. You don't need to change the polyatomic. So, for example, if you see nitrate, you don't need to change anything about it. If you see nitrate in your poly your ionic compound, just write nitrate. If you see hydroxide, just write hydroxide. You don't need to change anything about them. Okay? All right, so we're going to do two examples. I'll have you guys try this on your own because it kind of combines all three rules that we've learned so far. I want you guys to um, write the names for both of these right here, the example and 217. See if you guys can do this with the person next to you. I'll give you guys about two minutes. You'll have to refer back to your polyatomic chart if you don't have it memorized yet. Um, but these are the one, all the polyatomics here are the ones that you'll have to remember. So take a second, write it down on your paper, and then we'll go over it together. Okay, so let's start with um, FESO4. So um, let's start just by taking a look at the formula and seeing you know, what's in there. So first we wanna check what the polyatomic is. So what's the polyatomic ion in here? Yeah, SO4. So SO4, if you guys look at your polyatomic table, this is sulfate, right? And what is the charge on sulfate? Two minus, good. And again, this is something that's on your polyatomic chart. Sorry, I'm not scrolling up right now, um, but hopefully you're able to refer to it. Um, and then the sulfate is balanced out by how many irons? How many irons are there in total? What's the number of irons? Yeah, one, yeah. Sorry if I'm confusing you guys. There's only one iron, right? There's no number behind it. But the charge is two. Yeah, the charge is positive two. Sorry if I worded that poorly. And the reason why it's positive two is because there's only one iron to balance out the sulfate, right? Okay, so from there, the naming is really easy. We just write Fe's name. Fe is iron. Since it's positive two and it's in the middle of the periodic table, we're going to write iron two. And then remember, we never change the name of the polyatomic. So it's iron two sulfate. So this is the name of that ionic compound. I know, I know this is very exhilarating, right? Learning how to name things. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, right I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. Okay, let's go on to the next one. So the next one is NH4 NO3. Um so let's start with the cation. What is the cation for this compound? Yeah, ammonium. So NH4 is ammonium. And then what's the charge on NH4? Plus one. And then that means obviously NO3 is your anion. This is nitrate. And if you take a look at your polyatomic chart, you'll see that it's NO3 minus. Naming for this is really easy. They're both polyatomic. So we just write the name. So we got ammonium. Why am I writing this? I don't want to waste my time. I already wrote it. It's ammonium nitrate. There you go. Okay. So if they're both polyatomic, you can just write the name without changing anything. Just use the name on your chart. All right, any questions about that? So I'd say that's pretty much the real extent of the naming. If you're comfortable with those three rules, you should be able to do like 
98% of all the naming for the ionic compounds, at least for the AP test. Okay, so we're going to go over a couple more niche rules that I would say are optional if you have the extra brain capacity to remember it. But I would say if you want to focus more on other practice problems, I would say put your priorities there. Okay, but we're going to go over them just for the sake of me saying I, we went over it. Okay, well, let's uh, look at the other rules. So number four, again, this one is pretty optional. Okay, if there are two ions in a series, which means that here, for example, you got NO3 minus and NO2 minus, you guys notice how the only difference is one oxygen, right? Even the charge is the same. If there are two ions in the series, the one with more oxygen ends with eight, and then the one with less ends with eight. Okay, so again, you don't need to memorize that, but if you're ever stuck somewhere and you, I don't know, need to know that, then there you go. Eight is more than eight. Again, this is not that important of a rule. And then if there are more than two, usually it's going to be four in the series. You got eight and eight. Those are the ones in the middle. The one with the most oxygen is per, and then it ends with eight. And then the one um, that has the fewest is hypo and ends with eight. Okay. So again, these are optional rules. The only one I'd say that's really, that you might see often, and this is kind of in real life too, is um, sodium hypochlorate, NaClO, and this is bleach. Okay, so this sometimes comes up on the AP test, kind of useful to know for real life, but sodium hypochlorite is bleach. And that's the only one I say kind of know, but other than that, just memorize the, the polyatomics I told you to memorize, and you should be good for like 98% of the ionic compound names. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go to covalent compounds later. Yeah. Jumping ahead of me. But great question. Okay. Any questions on number four, the fourth rule? Okay. And then the last rule is with types of compounds called hydrates. So hydrates are molecules where you got a regular, where you got an ionic compound, and then they're surrounded by water molecules. So if I could kind of model that for you. You got a regular ionic compound, but since ionic compounds are made out of positive and negative ions, water gets attracted to them. So water molecules start to surround them and they kind of form a solid and there's water inside of it. A good example is Epsom salt. You guys might know that for like baths and things like that. That's magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. Okay. So that means that it's magnesium sulfate surrounded by seven water molecules. So the way that you write the name for that is just the normal rules for the ionic compound. And then depending on how many uh, waters there are, you just use one of these prefixes and then write hydrate. But again, this is very rare. You're not gonna really see problems with this in it. Um, just be familiar with it if you do see it. Hydrate means that there are water molecules attached to the ionic compound. Yeah, go Water yeah, that's for uh when we're balancing equations. So yeah, in real life you can't have a half a water molecule. Yeah. Good question though. Yeah. Our test? Let me check. Mm. No, this is not on your test. Okay. So even less reason to remember it. But just know for the AP test, if you see hydrate and then like a weird prefix in front of it, it just means there's water molecules attached to it, okay? But yeah, it's not on your test on Monday, so less incentive to remember. Like I said, four and five aren't that important. All right, um, we'll skip this question um, just because I think you guys get the idea. Um, but yeah, let's do a couple more practice problems just to make sure we're really dialed in with the naming because there is a section on your test where you're literally just naming the ionic compounds. Um, so I do want to give you guys a little practice together. So even if you took notes on this already, I would say this is a good way for you to test if you're able to do this on your own. So let's start with 12 or 219. I want you guys to work with the person next to you. And I want you to write the chemical formulas of these four compounds. Okay. It's kind of hard to see. I'm going to zoom in a little. 
I want you guys to write the formula. So here we have the names and I want you to turn it into the chemical formula. So I'll give you guys about three minutes to do that. Uh, again, feel free to work together. Use your notes. Don't use your notes, depending on how much of a challenge you want. Um, and yeah, and then we'll go over together. Okay, so let's write the chemical formulas for the following compounds. So let's start with copper, copper one oxide. Okay, so let's start with the cation. It's copper one, which means it's Cu plus one. God bless you. And then you have oxide. Oxide is just oxygen and oxygen's MCI. So it will be two minus, okay? Now, how many coppers would you need to balance out the oxygen? Two. So your formula will be Cu2O. All righty, let's go to the next one. We got iron two sulfide. So here we're gonna get iron Fe2 plus. Now sulfide is a little bit tricky because it sounds like sulfite, the polyatomic. However, since it's IDE, it's going to be sulfur's MCI. So if that tripped you up, just make sure you're careful with um, the spelling um, because IDE means just the regular element. So you have Fe2 plus and S. So your formula is just FES, okay? All right, next one is sodium peroxide. Okay, so sodium is the easy one. It's just Na. Okay, but if you go to your polyatomic chart, you're going to see peroxide. It's not really one of the ones you need to memorize, but um, it's on there on your chart. And peroxide has a formula of O2, 2 minus. Okay. And then how, what's up? Well, I was just looking at it, it says superoxide. Superoxide on the chart? Yeah. All right. Is that the name for peroxide? Okay. Or superoxide. Oh. Oh. It's just a different ion. That's O2 minus versus peroxide. Yeah. No, no, it's not. If, if anything, it's super rare, which is why I super didn't know it. Okay, but good question. So yeah, it's, don't worry about that at all. Okay, and so obviously you're going to need two NAs to balance it. You know, I have not heard of that term before. I don't remember hearing it. Okay, so if I don't know it, I can't expect you guys to know it, okay? Okay, that's a cool name. All right, so you get Na2O2. All right, last but not least, we got iron three, Fe three plus, and we got sulfate, which is SO4 two minus. Now, in order to balance this out, you're going to need two iron threes, and you'll need three total sulfates. So that's going to be the formula. All right. All right, any questions on uh, going from names to formulas? Okay, I'm gonna give you guys an option. Do you guys wanna go over some more practice problems for naming or should we move on to unit three? Okay, can I get hands for move on? And then, oh, okay. And then hands for ionic on more naming. All right, let's move on. Okay, so that's unit two guys. Um, So before we do fully move on, um, I know I said I'd only do it one time, but I love you guys so much. I'm actually going to tell you what types of problems are going to be on your test. Okay? Yeah. Because you guys are my favorite class ever. And you can show this recording to my last year's class because they're, dude, they're getting cocky, man. They're coming in and they're like, we're the best AP class. And I'm like, dude, who are you? All right. Anyway. Yeah. So make sure you let them know or, or let them hear this footage that I don't know who they are, any of them. Okay, so let's uh, go over the, the topics for unit two. So unit two exam topics. And I am recording this, so um, you'll have the recording on Canvas for you guys. So if, you know, don't freak out if you don't write all this down. Okay, okay. So I'm looking at your test right now. Um, Obviously, know your polyatomics. Um, Be comfortable with uh, calculating... Uh, Protons and neutrons, you know, with the mass number. So there are, there's going to be some questions where you'll have to find mass number. 
um, be, uh, be comfortable writing the isotope symbol okay, and interpreting them. So like if you get an isotope symbol, for example, um, try not to copy something directly into the test, but like if you get like 13 C, right, and six, just be comfortable knowing what these numbers are next to the symbol, okay? Ooh, I'm gonna draw a straight line. This should be straight. All right. Um, next, well, well, next topic you want to be comfortable with is mass spec. Okay, and this is like make sure you're comfortable with max mass spec. Okay, like super duper comfortable, like reading it, writing it. Yeah. All right. Uh, next is just how just ionic compounds. So basically, like how their formula. So balancing the formula. So like if you need how many of each thing you would need. Oh, let's see. Um, know the difference between um ionic and covalent compounds. And then obviously be comfortable with naming and just make sure you're really comfortable with naming. All right. So those are the main topics, or pretty much all the topics you'll need to know for your exam on Monday. Any questions on any of these? Anything I need to clarify? Yeah. So balancing formula is like molecular and material? Yeah, uh, no, not so much that, but like depend, like how many of each ion would you need to get an ion compound? Oh, okay. Yeah, something like that. So for example, like the stuff we've been doing, like if you have a iron three and sulfate, like how many of each do you need to balance it out? I'd be very comfortable manipulating that. It is a mass bank of like, uh, Averaging out those. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, be just be aware that for mass spec, it's how we find the average uh, a t uh molecular weight. Uh, just know what the x and y axis are. So this is your percent. This is your uh mass number. And then depending on how tall it is, it tells you uh, you know, the percentage. Uh, what did you just mention? For the ions, for the yeah. um, for for our, all the mass spec problems, it said it said like average. It it, it was it wasn't perfectly at like any number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're gonna get decimals. Yeah. So just be comfortable looking at those as well. So there'll be a little bit of rounding, a lot of a bit of uh something that fits the answer best possible answer. Yeah, it won't be always exact. To answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. Any other questions on the topics? And there'll be test corrections for this too. So even if you get a 0%, you can still get a 50% doing test correction. So. All righty. Congrats, guys. That's unit two.